This is the weekly energy reading from November the 30th through December the 6th, and I'm entitling this week, Moving Through Eclipse Season, okay? Um, we are officially in Eclipse Season, and we have been since the November 16th new moon in Scorpio, because since the first eclipse is a full moon, the new moon builds to the full moon, so technically we've been in Eclipse Season since November the 16th. But the actual eclipse is occurring now, okay? Monday, November the 30th, the lunar eclipse occurred in Gemini very, very early this morning. Of course, I was awake at that time. My body, like, popped me up about 30 minutes before the eclipse um, to really experience that eclipse, okay? Um, and really what, for me, the eclipse is, this weekly is not going to be too long because it's literally just the eclipse and, like, one or two other transits, and then that's it, right? So I want to jump into explaining the eclipse, and then I'm going to pull a card for you, and then I'm going to do this, okay? Uh, what's been happening is 2020 has given us some of the most challenging and most rare alignments astrologically ever, okay? There's been so many major conjunctions that have happened all within the same year of 2020, which is very rare, and also just very challenging aspects between, like, the Mars retrograde, Venus retrograde, all the squares occurring between those planets, and, and um, so much, and all the planets squaring into the stellium and Capricorn. There's just been a lot that we've had to deal with this year. And for me, this lunar eclipse is like a major reworking of our mind. Okay? All that occurred, you know, things just don't occur. Everything occurs for a reason in life. And all these things were for us to really shift and change what we think, how we think, what we want to think, and who we want to think with. Okay, um, We're moving to the new age, the age of Aquarius which is a mental age, it's an air sign age, an age of information, awareness, an age of understanding. And so to get into that age, which starts in literally less than a month, we have to really shift and break out of lots of old mental patterns, lots of old ways of thinking, believing, doing, achieving, connecting with other people as well. And if you know about the relationship and the, you know, just peer pressure and how easy it is to absorb other people's thoughts, um, people say, you know, you're the average of the, people, the five people around you. Relationships impact us heavily. And so this time we're really having to not only work on breaking mental patterns and reshifting how we think, but also reshifting the relationships in our life and also how they interact with us and, and connect with us. So all that's been happening in 2020, major, major reworking of ourselves. And this lunar eclipse in Gemini is the first eclipse in Gemini since 2012 the first opportunity for us to have a very divine and karmic resetting of our mind. We've all been kind of thinking and processing similar things since 2012. Not saying nobody's, you know, upgraded themselves. That's not true. Okay, because myself, you know, included, has been doing so much upgrades, downloads, reshifting my mind since 2012, especially. That's honestly when I begin my awakening. But since then, though, every eclipse in Gemini offers you a major resetting and offers you a major time to have a blank slate and a reworking of how you interact with others, how you communicate, how you think, and what you're sharing. Because okay? Gemini rules the twin is all about the connectivity between us and others. And so this next six months is going to be, you're going to notice so many people changing their minds about things, reworking what they think, learning new things as well. Gemini is a sign of studying and learning. Excuse me. Um, literally, as we start this eclipse, I'm getting into a er new er herbal course. So there's so many things that we're going to be seeing people doing and learning and embracing over this next six months, dealing with their mentality. Okay. So many people are going to be saying, I'm, I'm, you know, 
I'm speaking differently. I'm talking differently now. Um, you know, learning boundaries of how to stand up for themselves in conversation, learning how to express themselves on social media or anywhere, written, anything. Um, there's a lot more reworking and how we connect with people that's going to be happening this next six months. Okay? We have so many lessons that showed us um, who people truly are, who we truly are, where we want to go in life, the requirements of life. And now that Neptune also is freshly direct right before this eclipse, we've had so much time since late June to really see as well with Neptune retrograde the clarity of what truly is true in our life. Neptune retrograde shows you the reality of what really is. And so we've had a lot of opportunities to really see, wow, this is where my relationships have been going. This is what has been occurring. Not only you know people around me, but this is what I've been doing to impact my relationships. This is what I've been doing to impact my career. This is what I've been doing to impact my finances. We've been able to really see it in a clear understanding, in a clear way. And then now with this lunar eclipse of Gemini, we're getting all of that mind work, all that we've been processing, and we're going to be able to use all that wisely as we move forward. Okay? People are really going to be, especially this weekend and as we move to this next two weeks, and we're processing this lunar eclipse, people are going to be taking all they've been thinking, all they've been learning, all they've been hearing, and are going to be trying to figure out a way to move forward, are going to be thinking of a way to um, take all this information and apply it, okay? All the learning, all of the, you know, Gemini is curious about, you know, opening your mind to new things. People are going to be taking all they've been open. People have been listening. You know, people have, with this pandemic, you haven't seen as much action from people, but our ears have been open. We've been really taking in and listening and seeing what fits for us. A lot of people are in a lot of, um, Blank slate areas. They've lost a lot of relationships. They've lost a job, or a lot of things that have occurred for so many people this past year. So everyone's kind of in a in a, a new place in some way, in some way in their life, and they're opening up to new things. And this is so so beautiful. And all that this past year was supposed to do for us, put us in a new place, and get us ready to open up for newness and open up and, and want to embrace new things. Okay. Um, and so you're seeing that now. Now, this, this next six months with this eclipse season, because eclipses reset the themes, okay? This next six months is about, again, taking all that information and applying it with the lunar eclipse of Gemini. But on December the 14th, there's going to be a solar eclipse in Sagittarius about our vision forward. Where are we going? Okay. So we tap this next two weeks to kind of see and apply and figure out how we're going to use all this information and all this curiosity, all this new knowledge we've been absorbing over the past six months. And then with the Sagittarius solar eclipse, that's going to give us six months to really see, okay, this is where I want to shoot my arrow. Because if you don't know Sagittarius, the symbol for Sagittarius is the arrow, right? About where you're going, your trajectory in life. So many people have had to, have had to take a second in 2020 to reset, okay, what's my trajectory? Because I thought I was shooting this way, and now I'm realizing I should have been going this way or not shooting at all, you know. And so we're to having a moment of resetting. And then the solar eclipse is going to give us the impetus to get back up and replan to, to see where we want to go. And for some people, if you've already been resetting your mind, a solar eclipse in, in, in Sagittarius is about the go-ness. You know, let's get, get it started. Okay. And a week after that is the great conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter, really resetting and, and getting us into the new age. So there's a lot of new beginnings happening very, very soon. And I think this lunar eclipse of Gemini is an opportunity to really get yourself straight mentally, get yourself planned out, get yourself connected to the people you need to be connected to, so that when we jumpstart and move forward in December and mid-December, you're really going to be on the boat, okay? Um, and so that's what this lunar eclipse is for me, a major rewiping. Lunar eclipses also are emotionally purging times. So this is the perfect time to really go in and um, remove any feelings or any emotions that you have been um, holding on to or, or dealing with over the past six months, especially. Okay? And even I'm hearing since 2012, because we haven't had a, this is the first Gemini eclipse, okay? Um, so there's been, and then I've noticed that there's been so many things in my life, you know, that, and it makes, I'm even realizing even more now, I really recently was asking Spirit to get me back to the place where I used to wake up and just feel so ready for the day, okay? And even though I still am very excited about life and each day, with the responsibilities of life since 2012 have been very challenging for me. It's really had to get me on my path. Um, I've been very focused on, you know, that's when I left and started my career um, with 
dance in college in, in New York City. Um, I took my life very seriously. I was like, okay, look, this is where I want to go. This is where I started my goals, my dreams for myself. And now I'm in a place of really seeing a lot of those culminate. But also I've been doing lots of shedding and releasing all of those lessons because I've come through so much, but you can't keep holding on to those feelings because it's going to just make you feel like, oh, something else is coming in my life, you know, another lesson, you know. So I've needed to really shed all that I've went through. I've been doing so much looking at the past and seeing the purpose of so much of those things so that I can find gratitude for my lessons. Uh, there's been so much solidity and, and grounding and release, okay, from all of, since 2012, okay? So that could be similar to you. And so this time is a major reset, getting us re-ready to start again. But it's getting us reset on a mental plane, okay? Um, and so that is the majority of what I want to speak on for you guys. We jump into a new month um, starting this week on Tuesday. Make sure to say rabbit, rabbit. It is the last month of 2020. Yes, okay. Um, in the energy of 2020. 2021 definitely has different energy. Okay. Um, not going to say it can be less challenging, but it's, it's definitely going to be different. Okay. Um, check out my coming to the new age. I'm sorry, the new age begins video for more information. I literally talk about the energy from now through May of 2021. Okay. So if you want to know what's coming in 2021, check out that video. The only thing I want to talk about this week is Mercury leaves Scorpio and moves into Sagittarius on December the 1st. Okay. And this energy, you know, Mercury in, is all right in Scorpio. You know, Scorpio is about deep investigation, diving deep into things, looking underneath the surface, figuring out the facts. And Mercury loves that. With Mercury is about information, logic, understanding. So diving deep, he has no problem figuring out, you know, what's going on. Scorpio is a water sign, so it, it is a little more emotional than Mercury would like. But it's been all right, okay? Mercury is not going to be excited and really working for us until January when he moves into Aquarius, okay? He's got to move to Sagittarius and Capricorn where he does not like that much, okay? Sagittarius, he really doesn't like being in Sagittarius because that's the opposite of Gemini, his ruling energy. Okay? So starting on December the 1st, all of, um, let me just make sure. Sorry, on December the 20th, Mercury moves into Capricorn. So from December the 1st through December the 20th, it's going to be a lot more about Mercury and Sagittarian energy, which is less practical, less logical. We're not going to really understand a whole bunch, but it's great for envisioning, great for dreaming, great for moving forward, um, great for optimism, great for you know hope and dreaming. Um, you know, Mercury and Scorpio, with that whole retrograde of Scorpio as well, has put us in a little bit of a dark energy. Um, it shows you the reality of things. It makes you really, really see things. Um, you know, it can be kind of depressing. It can be um, kind of solemn. Um, that's Scorpio's energy. It shows you your fears and anxiety, anything that you've been hiding that you, or you could have wanted to be hiding, okay? You could have hid because you didn't want to deal with it. comes out in Scorpio energy, okay? And so we get an opportunity to really feel more lightness um, as we move into December because we're already in Sagittarius energy which I've noticed has made it more light. Then we're going to have Mercury joints in that energy starting December. And Venus is going to move into Sag um, eventually as well in December, um, December the 15th. So that really, we're really going to see a major shift in energy. And that's the same time we have that solar eclipse in Sagittarius is very close to um, the Great Conjunction. So you understand that, you know, by mid-December, we're going to be in, Hell of different energy. Okay. Um, so that's the majority of the trends I want to talk about. Venus is going to try Neptune on Sunday, which is a really great energy for relationships and connecting through spirituality and music and dance and art. Um, but it's not a major alignment. Uh, and so I don't want to really get too deep into that. But that's what I have, guys, for this weekly. Before I pull my favorite deck for you guys to give you a message for this week, I want to let you know the 2021 preparation readings are still on. Um, they're $55 for a 45-minute session offering you a, astrology information about the rest of 2020 and all the way through March of 2021. I'm also pulling cards to give you guidance getting into the new year. Um, they've been a hit. I might actually end up putting a pause on them because they're, they've really been a hit, and it's been hard for me to get them out. But if that interests you, they're very valuable and really help you get an understanding of what's coming. Reach out to me. Also, check out any other services down below. And check out my website. There's tons of courses on my website that are very valuable as well. Um, they're really great for learning and gifting and the holidays. So anything else, 
you have any other questions or anything, just check on the website and get in contact with me. Okay. Give the video a like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed, my loves. Um, and that's all my marketing for right now. Okay. So, last thing, I'm going to get a general message for the collective spirit for this week. It's Eclipse Energy. We're in strong. What message do you have for us? So, 25. Release the dark wounds. Let love live. Let me read this for you guys, and then I'm going to say goodbye. 25. If we detach something from its source too soon, trying to force it to become what it is not yet ready or willing to become, we can unintentionally sap it of its strength and kill it. There is a dark wound in the consciousness of humanity, which demands perfection and denies process. If you are thinking of publishers before you have even written the book, if you are comparing your unfinished song idea to the latest best-selling pop release, if you have decided that you are not good enough or worthy enough to, to succeed before you've given it everything you've got and asked for divine help, then this dark wound has you in its grips. You have to let go of the death grip of perfectionism and let yourself and your ideas live. Love is abundant, creative, and inspiring. It moves us so much more joyously and creatively than fear. You're being asked to honor the path of your own love, what inspires you, what feels exciting, joyful, and perhaps even rather different. Let that live. What I'm seeing is this is the sad energy we're coming that's coming in. You know, um, it's really going to help to make us see the forest from the trees. And look at look at this. Okay. Right now, we've been so focused on each little tree. What about this? What if I well, this doesn't happen? What if that doesn't happen? What if this person does this? What if that person does this? That's getting us so okay. But to move into the new age, we have to really embrace the full forest so we can journey and get excited. Think about if you're journeying into a new into this forest for the first time, and you have to stop at every tree. You know how long that would take, and how it would really zap any of your positivity and excitement for the journey because you're stopping at every single tree. You don't even get to really embrace the full journey of where you're going. Okay, So we're moving to this new age all about resetting yourself, re-envisioning your future. We got to zoom out. We can't go in this new age looking at every single tree. Okay, So that's kind of this message I'm getting from this card here. Let things begin. Trust things and just release any perfectionism and darkness. Okay, Release the dark wounding of false belief. There are countless stories of vastly successful artists who very nearly bend the project that was the mark making of their career because of the, of the despair fostered by their own dark nature. They doubted. They were uncertain. Was their work any good? Was it useless? They struggled to believe in the right of a work to come to life, whether it was accepted, revered, or rejected by others or not. They nearly lost their work to fear. Undoubtedly, there have been many times when this has actually happened, and the work was not saved, not allowed to live. Do not let this happen to you. Whether something is meant to be a commercially oriented venture or a more personal creation for your own therapeutic healing, it must be allowed to be without judgment, without criticism, even without premature evaluation. It must be allowed to be what it is, and only time, love, patience, and attention will reveal it. <laughs> the message, I'm sorry. Oh, this is about, okay, that's about another card if you draw it, if you drew it. So that's the message, guys. Okay, let me read that last sentence again. It must be allowed to be what it is, and only time, love, patience, and attention will reveal it. Okay, we're going into a whole new age, okay? The Saturn-Pluto conjunction that started this year for us only happens once every 20 so years. Okay? And it also only happens in Capricorn once every, like, over 200 years. Okay? The Jupiter-Pluto conjunction only happens once every 12-ish years. Okay? That happened this year as well. The Saturn-Jupiter conjunction that's happening in less than a month happens only once every 20 years. And this is the first time it's happening in air signs for thousands of years. And it'll be holding for the next 250 years in the energy of air. Um, what else has been happening recently that's major? Okay. Uh, notice all that Mars retrograde in Aries hasn't happened for a long time. Okay. 
that occurred. We had Venus retrograde as well that happened this year, which hasn't happened um, in Gemini since 2012. Okay, um, it happens every two years. And so there's a lot that are, that culminated. All those cycles hit in 2020. Right? And every time planets meet, that's a new beginning. So we've had so much new beginnings in 2020. But look at how 2020 looks. Okay, um, It's a lot of resetting. But if you notice in life, as soon as you start something, you don't really see the full culmination of it yet. You know what I'm saying? You plant the seed, it must take time to germinate. You know, Birds, you don't just they have to lay the egg first. Okay. Um, and so it's about planting the seed and trusting your heart with your decisions coming into this new year and not letting your, your doubts, your worries, your uncertainties kill off anything that's just beginning. Okay. Um, that's what I have, my loves. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, check out my website for all of my services, all my workshops and courses, blogs. I get all kinds of stuff. Okay. Um, that's what I have. Much love. Enjoy the week and I'll talk to you guys later.